And finally, the D.C. Defenders have come back to the nation's capital. And we, the people, in order to form a more perfect beer snake, have brought back our famous beer snake tutorial for you tonight. Very simple process. Step one, acquire your beer. Step two, ingest your beer. Step three, place your beer on the rear end of that snake. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you beer snake. Uh. Now I've collected myself. Thank you for the Penn State degree. Help me for that one. That was cute, by the way. Yeah, it's nice to have a, a team in this fight, Zook. It really is. Now, step four, I didn't add repeat. Responsibly. Responsibly, of course. But do it with pride, because you represent the UFL. And you represent the gold standard of spring football fan bases. You represent America's team, who, may I remind you if I've never said it before, has never lost in Audi Field. Quick shout out to the DC Beer Snake Conductors. Those boys are going to be handing out the rally towels on Sunday. Got to get one of those. Right. They watch the show. They love us. We love them. Get a free towel. That's going to be sweet. See those rally towels out there. It's the Roughnecks and the Defenders. Good guys favored by five in this one. Total sits at 41. Forecast 60 with 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Ideal football and boozing conditions in the district. So go see the Nats. Go by Walters. Grab a beer before the game. DC offense against the Houston defense. What do we know? Well, There's five things that I was able to break down that went wrong for Jordan Tamu and co. in San Antonio. First, they went three and out in their first drive. And that was after giving up a game-opening touchdown. If that rings a bell, it's because the same thing happened in the championship game. So that's a losing formula, right? I mean, second of all, Reggie Barlow goes conservative. He punted to play field position. We heard it live on the broadcast, and he he settled for field goals a lot. When the dude on the other sideline was dialing up fake field goals and and going for every single fourth down. Third, they couldn't couldn't run the ball. They could not get Cam Harris going whatsoever. They were down 14-0 at the end of the first, so it wasn't easy to establish a run. All of a sudden, Jordan had to throw it 45 times. At fourth, they couldn't protect Jordan. He was running for his life all day long. And finally, Gene DeLance lost his damn mind, much like I was on Sunday afternoon. But I didn't spit. That led to a 15-point swing and the same amount D.C. lost by, which was 15 points. So how do you fix that this week? Well, you're facing a Houston defense that terrorized the Memphis Showboats. I mean, they had three sacks, seven TFLs, two takeaways last week. And really the solution for me is simple. You execute the reads in the RPO game. That's the priority. You work the short pass. You protect Jordan from Reuben Foster and some of those other dogs they have on the offense or the defensive line of Houston. Toby Johnson, Chris Odom might be coming back from injury. If you're if you have it on fourth and short from inside the 25, go for it. One, two, I would even say three yards out. Go for it, Reggie. That's what we want to see. Get a first-half lead. Pound the rock in the second half. Darius Higgins, the backup running back, should be coming back. Maybe he'll become the feature back of this offense. But you got to ride your defense because they're ready to feast this week, and they're ready to get a win in Audi. The biggest mismatch of the entire UFL weekend for me is the Roughnecks offense against a pissed-off Greg Williams, who was not happy with week one. Uh, The third down defense actually excelled for DC last week. That's a great sign for Greg. It's his favorite down to blitz you. And Houston's O-line has no shot. I'm sorry. They got no shot on Sunday. They gave up a bunch of sacks last week. The running backs only mustered 19 yards on the ground. But I'll give Jarrett Garantano this. He does a pretty good job escaping the pocket. Um, I like what I see there. 
when he gets on the run. But that could be huge for this kind of defense, but that doesn't always guarantee a positive play just because he can get out of the pocket. Do the Roughnecks go read Sinet here? I don't know. I don't think it matters. Behind this offensive line, I mean, T.J. Walker ain't walking through that door. So, as much as it pains me to say, the defenders are the only team that did not find the end zone in week one. I'm sitting here doing a week two preview show, and my team has not scored a touchdown yet. I, that's That hurts. Like, they can only go up from here, right? And this weekend, they bounce back. Comfortable home cover for the greatest fan base in spring football. This is an all-around better team. Total, I think, is too much for these defenses. It's too high at 41. Even if D.C. finds that offensive rhythm and they're able to score, I don't know, four touchdowns, Houston isn't scoring more than one touchdown on this defense. The defenders will move to 10-0 and at Audi Field. 10-0, and Zook, in franchise history. That's 10 in a row. Let's go if we get this one. I'm pretty confident that they will. I'm going defenders big. I like the cover. I like the under. Zook, I dare you. I dare you. I mean, you you talk about you're going to fade D.C. all season. Are you going to put up or shut up? Let's see it. Uh, I got to see this. It's a sad day. I don't even want to hear what you. Oh, <laughs> it's a sad day. Come on. I mean, oh, we want the beer. Snake. No, stop it. Stop it. 